now, now, now the power discussion is shut down because we are out here. Duck Hunt versus Me Gunner. Me Gunner. Back on the PS2. Here again, once again. I love this. these up tilts. It's just raw anti air. It's like, you're above me, you're trying to go for these jumps. Caleb says, swing. And finals. And keep in mind, Zane does have to win 10. Holy, wait a minute. Huh? Forget what I was just saying. That popped shield like it was nothing. How much shield damage is that to you? That's ridiculous. <laughs> Apparently that much, because I don't believe Zane had shielded any time prior in that match. <laughs> Can comes out before Stealth Burst, and the percents are even despite the mid-match like shenanigans. <laughs> Shield breaks are always so surprising to see, and uh... I'm certain Zane was surprised from that Stealth Blast coming, slipping right through the can. Yeah. Zane losing their stock. Now we're gonna see how much damage Caleb is gonna get away with right here. Caleb's in his element. He's continuously ledge trapping Zane. He's putting up his bombs and slept on. I think many of the Mies are super slept on. Like I think me, uh, me Brawler is. He's got me brawl has got some insane stuff, but the worst one is easily a sword fighter. Even then, like sword fighter has plenty of confirms and plenty of tools. But me gunner's F smash. Oh, so he has to get caught oh, by the charge the, shot on the fastball. Nice snipe. Oh, like so all of the Dane, like it's not just the fact that they have so many projectiles, it's that so many of the projectiles are so strong. On top of having tools like F Smash as he catches the DI in. Yeah. That was uh, a beautiful DI mix up. <laughs> like so many tools like have just so much range with me gunner that you're not like, fighting through all of that and ha how much base knockback all of these tools have, like it resets your progress so often. It can get almost infuriating. We've seen John Numbers is pretty happy with how uh, this bracket has turned out. <laughs> oh, Numbers. Uh, what's up, Numbers? Still have some of that left over pumpkin puree. Pumpkin puree? Yeah, apparently, apparently he made too much. He had enough pumpkin puree to produce five pies. That's a lot of pie. And I mean, like, pumpkin pie. Hot take, not even that good. Like, it's fine, it's good pie. Like, but it's not oh. like, great pie. Like, it's just kind of good pie. And it's very very seasonal and very specific flavor, so. Apple pie? Apple pie's phenomenal, uh, arguably. Oh. And I would argue, I would make this argument, it is the best pie. <laughs> okay. Re regardless, <laughs> pie, regardless. Your food, Food opinions are very important things, as we know from classic Duramgar food opinions. Oh, that SD sucks. But uh, hey, yeah, regardless. <laughs> oh, we're gonna see a ton of damage here. Yeah, uh, he's. Looks like Zane was looking for uh, some sort of way to get him into the get a Caleb into the can. But uh, the fourth throw was not enough, and. That SD was rough for Caleb. As... Oh man, like, he's bleeding fast, but manages to patch the wound just quick enough with that stealth blast. Yeah, I, I gotta so say, much. that SD almost ruined the game for Caleb. It really did. Like, it it put a pause on the flow that they had. And it forced them to get back into an even situation, even with the percent differential. Like there was plenty of time left for uh, for both players to figure something out. So without that same kind of flow that he had going on, like losing, uh, he was he was in a rough spot. But now you've got the reset. Now you've got game one under your belt. You can focus on the remaining. You can focus on the remaining games.
without having ha without having to worry about what might have been. Uh, excuse me. <coughs> Three, two, one, We're running it back to PS2. Oh, pack man, here we the, go. The pack is back, and he's on the attack. Oh, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, we're here. We're... <laughs> it's Zeno. It's Zeno Y5. It's Zeno Grand. <laughs> It's the inner grand, so I'm 43 p.m. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> hey man, we haven't seen a timeout in a while though. So, both these, both oh. the players are sustaining its cautious aggression, but it's sustained aggression. <laughs> oh wow, that... I think that F, that down angled F smash just caught, his, caught the two frame. And now Zayn has put themselves in a... Phenomenal spot against the character that gave them the most that gave them the most trouble in uh, in winners finals. Yet we've seen this before with Mouse Rat and with Zane. An early stock deficit from Caleb that he fights his way back from and ends up taking stock two first. Beautifully done, beautifully done. Ooh, that grab is risky. Ooh. Yeah. Alright, here we go. We got the ship right in deck. See if you can get some combos off of it. Nice. Oh, he got the wrong hit of ship, though. That could have gone farther. Yeah. <laughs> as scary as that sounds. <laughs> it's like, oh, you got, you got like, 30 damage? It's like, yeah, but I, I could have gone farther. We could have gone even further beyond. <laughs> Caleb was, was an inch away, a little bit too far. <laughs> that roll was baited to perfection, placing the can in, in an arc that made it look like it was about to hit ledge, and called out the roll on. Yeah, so when that bell hits shield, is the hitbox still active, or does it go away? It is, bell is as active for as long as you could see it. Oh, wow. So... so Almost as long as you can see it. There's a little bit of leeway, but yeah, it's it's active for a long time It's not like a links up B where if you shield the first hit the rest of the hitbox becomes disabled But like, no, you can it's there and it, it, it's waiting That could be some good shield pressure Yeah, like that's Oh, okay, well, that key fired straight through anything that Zane was trying to set up, and, uh... Yeah, the Galaga in hand, 40%, like, just like that, and here we go. Even game. <laughs> that's a, that's a unique right. property of, a uh, uh, Clay Pigeon. Sorry, I cut you off. Go ahead. Uh, I, I was just gonna say that was, like, a nice narrative there. What were you saying? Uh, just the unique property of a uh, of clay pigeon. Like, not only is it a floating projectile, but it's also a multi-hit. So if, when you, whenever it's triggered, the uh, the hit stun will like compile together and uh, will compile together, and the hitbox will last just that little bit longer. So, oh, I don't. Know. Utilizing tools is utilizing tools that may not be seen initially all that useful is the name of the game for both of these characters and you, know, you can think back to smack 4 for pac-man when sinji was making his rounds and becoming the one of one of if not the best pac-man in the world like mm -hmm. utilizing different tools that you never would expect and even in this game like Pac-Man's up to, I only really see used by Sinji because he makes use of the entire character's kit. I get this, he's a Pac-Man soulmate. And Zane with Duck Hunt is the same character, is the same uh, idea. He's optimizing his strings and optimizing his, optimizing their strings and optimizing their combos to be near perfect. Yeah, they're, they're doing a great job of just doing all these setups, uh, specifically like camp setups, but also, this is what fast the most. Um, at one point, it compiles. You're cutting out a little bit. I'm sorry. The audio fine. 
Yeah, okay, now I can hear you. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah, I was gonna say, Pac-Man is typically seen as an annoying character, um, that kind of, quote-unquote, like, mashes projectiles, or, like, just camps. But I, I, I've always found a lot of, uh, top-level, or even mid-level Pac-Mans really explore the kit. You really see with Caleb here, like, you're seeing these nice blood traps with Bell. You're seeing spaceship combos being optimized. To me, I've always just found that appealing, me personally. It's it's a unique design for to be sure, and unique designs are something that uh, that ha like in a game with seventy plus characters, if a character is seen as like this is a really unique, like that's that's something to celebrate in and of itself. Like you you got to be running out of ideas sometimes, Sakurai. Like there's eighty of these. <laughs> uh, but we're gonna push. Push yeah, down. I wonder if the idea to get this kill. Okay, push down to the wire. Two percent differential. Hydrant is going to play a huge role in the rest of this game and how both players manage to play around it, but the apple comes out first as Zane over dashes forward just a little bit too far. And despite Apple having a really not good uh, launch angle, very straight up in fact, it's pretty strong and eventually it doesn't matter what percent you're at. <laughs> Oof. Ooh. A long game, but one that goes in the favor of C. Caleb as he is one game away from sealing off this grand finals in a tight 3 0. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually amazed to see the Pac Man come out. I really thought it was only going to be me, Gunner, but I'm happy to see it. I'm definitely happy to see it. Caleb is really creative with those uh, fruit setups. Yeah, the only, like, you're mentioning Pac-Man as an annoying character, and you're not wrong. Uh, he has really good frame data for being a, a, a quote-unquote freestyle trap character, uh, as we mentioned, Sinji. Oh, wait, there's the pilot. <laughs> oh, a beautiful Palutena. Uh, here we are. The metagame has come to oppress Don't these tell... characters once oh, more. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, a little bit, gotta be a little careful. Guy. Uh, can can Caleb oppress the meta game? Can Caleb overcome the oppressive meta game, or will Zane's uh, pocket Palutena prove the difference? I don't often see uh, their Palutena come out. Like if they're counterpick, if uh, Zane's counterpicking, I see Lucas a lot more, especially uh, as of on Wi-Fi recently. He had the third bounce. Palutena is uh, arguably one of the easier characters to pick up and play. Or pick up, play, and learn. Almost definitely. And I wonder if they're going to use uh, that Explosive Flame a lot in this game. Because I know that Explosive Flame is not only good for, obviously, catching people off stage, but also it's good in destroying Hydrant. Like, you'll start to notice a lot of Explosive Flames mid-neutral just because really good for getting that hydrant that whole sh um, that whole string was incredible getting the reverse uh, or getting the forward air to trickle the hydrant forward and using an uh, an orange on top of that like putting together so much of a forward offense uh, like just out of nowhere thanks to the hydrant and having the right fruit on deck and once you took the once you took Palutena's jump that was it for Zane's first stock yeah, just beautiful usage of that fruit there. And it, 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 it once again, it plays into the whole idea of Pac-Man being like very interesting and just... Just like a really cool character in general. Like, again, like... You may see it as like an annoyance, but at the same time... Those projectile setups, the... The way in which they're specifically set up is so beautiful to a point where you almost kind of forget that he's kind of... Just zoning out. And I feel like Caleb in particular kind of goes a little bit more aggro in situations where most Pac-Mans will kind of just drift away, throw their fruit. So that also just makes this whole uh, Pac-Man play even more interesting. I mean, I'm sure Mouse Rat would love to disagree with you given how uh, long those games have tended to run. Oh, we'll have to be very careful with how active that bell is. Mm. All right. 
good discipline coming out from Zane. They seem to be very, very, very sure about just waiting it out. Waiting. <laughs> I like that little dash attack and then perfect spacing to get that bell. With the armor powering right through the bell as uh, the Palu Classic. Turn around and shield right up against the ledge. Pao Tana the back smash. throw yep. is strong, but so is Bell F Smash. And suddenly Caleb is looking like, you know, he's looking like the Giants did in the fourth quarter against the Eagles. But, you know, the Giants managed to lose that game, so it's not impossible. <laughs> Excuse the football reference, all you esports crazy people. <laughs> uh, Giants suck. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse my sadness. <laughs> yeah, so, <plenty> of... <laughs> I can't. I'm, I'm... Uh, plenty, uh, plenty of explosive flame usage, uh, as you mentioned prior, but he's using it a little bit differently, in a little bit of a different way than uh, mentioned prior. Oh, great. Great awareness to, to get that downer. He's using explosive flame just as a means of like bypassing any and all of these uh, hitboxes and projectiles that Caleb is throwing out. Because explosive flame uh, creates a hitbox at the spawn point. It doesn't have to travel at all, like uh, like auto reticle. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just just kept it simple. Just be just belt to F smash. Like if it works, it works. No need to do anything differently. Yeah. A little bit unceremonious, but a win is a win nonetheless. Uh, he caught running along this ground with Bell, a frightening spot, and that auto reticle miss is gonna spell the end of a Palutena stock and the tournament. I see Caleb takes Xeno Wi Fi number 33. Yeah, check that orange taking the jump away. Man. Uh, not only does Pac-Man have good tools in disadvantage, he has good tools in disadvantage against his own items. So Pac-Man doesn't have to worry about his items being used against him, he just has to worry about if the opponent like takes one of the fruits and then just doesn't use it at all. <laughs> so I was just looking at some statistics here. Um, it seems that the only two people to have taken a game off of Caleb tonight were Slam Jamakis? What is this? Slam Jamakis. Uh, and then you have. Who else is there? Yeah.